Hey guys, welcome to my 200,000 subscribers special. 200,000 subscribers special. This sounds so wrong. I still can't believe it. I never thought uh, when I started this channel it would go this far. So I'm yeah super happy. Thanks everyone for subscribing and watching the videos. And also thanks a lot for Mumbo for doing the server tours with us two months ago. That also gave a huge boost to the channel. Alright, so for 200,000 subscribers, I thought about doing something special that I spent quite some time on. In the early days of my channel, I had a bit of a reputation as a tree farm expert. I spent a ton of time on designing all kinds of tree farms. For example, I also remember doing something special for a 600 subscriber special. I think I made a universal tree farm back then. So what better opportunity to go back to the roots and also get a farm of my bucket list that I also yeah, plan to do for quite a while. So here we have a automatic 2x2 jungle tree farm. To my knowledge, this is also the first yeah, jungle tree farm of this kind. Coolman made quite a similar concept a while ago, but he did not uh, break the locks automatically. He left it out for later. All right, so this yeah, tree farm does it all. Basically, it breaks enough leaves. So I get enough saplings back and also breaks all the locks. The only thing the player of course needs to do is place saplings since this can't be automated. The reason why it's so hard to farm 2x2 jungle trees are of course the randomly generated branches and you also need to worry about getting enough saplings back. So those randomly generated branches are quite a pain. They're actually able to replace blocks so you can't really also suppress them from generating. You need to deal with them uh, wherever they yeah, would generate. Another issue is getting enough saplings back in order to grow the next tree. You need to break at least 160 leaves and also collect those saplings. So we kind of went with the nuclear solution for the problem. I made a 2x2 piston wall just to push three trees in a row out. Uh, this breaks all the saplings, deals with the branches and then just pushes everything in front of this TNT duper array. I also had to make sure that the piston wall is able to push out all of those trees in pretty much every case. So if there would be a random chance that a tree would generate branches and there would be like five blocks in a row like this, and this would happen on all three trees, of course it's really unlikely, uh, we would have a problem that the whole piston wall would crash. So the piston wall is reliable, but not if the push limit would be exceeded. So in order to find out if that case could happen ever, I set up yeah, this command block here that uh, basically does remove all the locks directly in front of the command block, so in that direction, and counts how many locks are removed. So as you can see here, this tree here is slowly being chopped up. And you have the scoreboard commands, we check what's the max amount of locks in a row. And as you can see, it was four in the end. So at most, we would have 12 blocks to be pushed. So this is working fine. I couldn't add a fourth tree because then sooner or later, uh, the, yeah, the piston wall would crash since it can't push more than 12 blocks. Now with the release of 1.14, it was also a really good time to work on this tree farm because a change to TNT and explosions uh, enabled blocks to be dropped 100% of the time. Previously, there was always a loss involved if we would blow up stationary blocks. One way to get around this issue in lower versions was moving the blocks uh, while they're getting blown up. This way you also get a 100% drop chance. So that's why yeah, it's quite simple now in Microphone 14 to deal with this mess of pushed over locks. So we just have a TNT tube array that takes them out from bottom to top. And doing this, you get about 90% of the locks. Some of the lock items are blown up since they land on lower locks, but with a 90% efficiency, yeah, this is really good. I think in comparison in 1.12 um, or 1.13, you, you could probably expect about 20 to 25% efficiency uh, doing the same. So yeah, it's really worth it to do it in microphone 1.14. Just FYI, in case you're interested, how I would have dealt with this in lower versions. So we would need to deal with the branches somehow and um, also with the tree further. So I think I would just have sent a flying machine from either you know, top to bottom or bottom to top that deals with all the branches, then try to convert those somehow and push them into a TNT blast chamber where they are blown up in a controlled manner and you, you would also get near to 100% of the drops. Now, of course, you still would need to deal um, with the tree trunks 
So this would have been yeah quite a challenge to do before, but it would have been possible. But yeah, who has the time for that really? <laughs> so that's why it was quite convenient to work on this project now in Microphone Point 14. And next, let's take a look at the TNT sequence. There's a really quite a lot of redstone here in the back. So what's important is that the TNT explosions um, are not too frequent. So we have enough time for the items to fall down. If we would uh, have a a smaller interval in between, then the higher exp explosion will just blow up the blocks before they have a chance to fall down. Also, we alternate between using the left TNT duper and then the right TNT duper from this perspective. So first, um, basically we take out the main portion of the locks, then blow up the rest on the left, and then another time here on the right. Also, the third time we activate um, yeah, this TNT tube that's getting activated twice, uh, we shoot the TNT a bit further, so that also would take care of the locks that they end up here close to the obsidian. So, how do we do that? Well, we just um, shoot the TNT out uh, two game ticks earlier, so that they have a... Yeah, they fly a bit longer and further. It's actually quite simple how we achieved it. The TNT flies a bit further. Here in the back, we just got a T flip flop that, yeah, depending on if it's getting activated first or second time, uh, changes the, the wiring or the delays here in the back a little bit. Despite the main concept being quite simple, just to push the locks over and then blow it up with TNT, I was facing a lot of smaller issues that had to be solved. For example, dealing with the two way flying piston wall. I designed this one about two years ago and now finally had a use for it. I showed it back then already, you could use this to push uh, yeah, trees, but there were some issues with, of course, also growing the trees and the piston wall not colliding with the important parts. For example, you need a dispenser in order to uh, grow the trees real quick. And of course, this yeah, should not collide with the piston wall. Also, we had to worry about the tree detection. What I usually do for tree detection is, for example, just have a yeah, a lit repeater pointing into the sapling in case it grows in the tree. The lock is getting powered and then you can take an output on the right. But the way the piston wall works, um, this would have not been possible. So that's why we had to come up with a different you know, growth detection. I'm actually using daylight sensors for it. So if a tree would grow, then parts of the canopy would uh, generate above this daylight sensor. And then we can detect the change in daylight, yeah, or skylight value uh, with this contraption here. So in case a tree grows, uh, yeah, this torch turns off. And if all three torches have turned off, then we basically start the whole harvesting process. Right, then yeah, there were more smaller issues because since we're now using a skylight, uh, we had a problem with trees randomly growing. It's not super likely, but the way we place the saplings, it could actually happen that you place a sapling and two ticks later this would have been a grown tree. If the skylight is there. So yeah, saplings need a certain light level and this would have been exceeded by the hole in the roof. So I can also quickly demonstrate what could happen is you try to play, place a yeah, 2v2 jungle tree. Um, need random tick speed really high. So I try this and bam, tree has grown before I could complete the 2x2 two two jungle tree. So the, the way to prevent this is of course blocking the skylight axis. Um, this is what we do here with this piston setup. We just push blocks above to temporarily um, block skylight axis. So while we're placing saplings, they, they, are, they, they won't grow immediately. And then um, once we're finished here with the AFK player that rides in a minecart, basically in the default position, uh, we push out the blocks again, which enables the, the tree growth to be detected. So this, so, uh, this problem also had to be solved somehow. Now that I've dealt with the lock detection, we also need to solve the issue with the locks generating directly in front of the dispenser, since those locks would then yeah, limit new saplings to be placed. Right, so the way I deal with this issue um, was having pistons being pushed up, pushing the locks over, and then a second set of pistons would push uh, those locks up by one. So they would be picked up by the piston wall. Also, I had to make sure, of course, that none of the piston wall collides um, with those uh, pistons here. So that's why they had to be raised up as well. You can also show it real quick. You can activate this here. So that's what's happening. 
and this can be then pushed over by the piston wall. All the logs, saplings and in 1.14 also the sticks are then collected here at the bottom of this water stream and are sent to the sorting system. We also send exactly 12 saplings up to the player that can be collected um, while yeah, being pushed over by the piston here. So the saplings would end up directly below the piston here. Right. Another nice little detail, I'm also making use of, one, of the 1.13 features. Uh, in order to send a signal up to the pistons, they would push over the block. We use yeah, this instant wire here uh, using the bubble blocks. So we push away the mega block at the bottom. This water will co uh, immediately convert it into normal water, which the observer can pick up. And yeah, once it's getting converted back into bubbles, uh, that's, uh, we get the second pulse. That's why we got a T flip flop here as well. And this would make sure that the, yeah, the blocks are then removed again so we can detect the tree growth. All right, so this was pretty much the main redstone in total. This farm would produce about 14,000 logs power, which I think is quite decent uh, considering it's a 2 by 2 tree farm and it's quite a, cha a challenge to deal with it. Of course, there are faster 1 by 1 tree farms that will also return enough saplings. Uh, it was mostly about the challenge of making a functional yeah, 2 by 2 jungle tree farm. But the main limiting factor of this farm is, of course, lag and also how fast the player can place those saplings. Um, so if you would imagine... Yeah, building this farm maybe six times if the computer could handle that and the only thing the player needs to do is really dealing with the saplings i could imagine that a two by two jungle tree farm could be faster than a one by one jungle tree farm yeah if you would just copy this over a couple of times and the server can handle it i yeah, did some testing of course i checked the mspt uh, the laggiest part unfortunately 114 is the piston ball moving it's at, at about 15 to 20 mspt so in theory, you could run three or two of those at the same time. On the way back, it's actually even less laggy, uh, so if the tree is not getting pushed. So it, yeah, if you maybe cycle it through, you could maybe run a couple of those farms at the same time and get quite a lot of logs this way. For building this in survival, a mob switch might be required, or you maybe want to build this in a mushroom island biome, since you might need to deal with some mob spawning at the higher logs. Of course, the, usually the leaves would uh, protect trees from mob spawning, but once the tree is getting pushed over, you might end up with some mobs here that spawn, uh, so you might need to deal with that. So I would just recommend, if you really want to build this farm in survival, I will provide a world download to maybe yeah, have a mob switch or build it actually in a mushroom island biome where you don't have any hostile mobs spawning. Last, I also want to show you how you would need to operate this farm. So usually you would yeah, start up in this situation, then need to place 12 saplings first. Oh, that was... This was actually not lucky. It's still in the high random tick speed mode. Okay. So we got 12 saplings, then you could jump into the minecart, turn on the farm. And soon as all the trees have grown, the piston wall is getting launched. And meanwhile, you could try to align the player. So you need to aim at those coordinates with the F3 menu. Minus 2.6. It's a bit more to the left. Doesn't have to be 100% correct. Could also be minus 2.5. And... Good enough, 4.1. Okay. Then you can... Press uh, yeah, down the right mouse button, so we would try to play saplings. Now the play is also sent off. We're doing this actually after the machine has arrived, because in 1.14 we have uh, huge is issues with piston client side lag. Alright, then we would yeah, place the saplings here. Meanwhile the tree is getting blown up, and there we go. Now we're back. And we start the bone, mill, bone milling again, once the tree is grown, we send it off again. Okay, yeah, client side issues are really bad. But I heard today from Kojo that they found a fix for this. This will be implemented later in Micro 4.14. Not in Micro 4.14.2, but later we'll get a fix for those client side piston issues because, yeah. Now I have a really decent computer, but it's 3 FPS for a piston wall. Uh, it's, yeah, it's not a lot. 112 would have been much better. Okay. 
There we go. We send off again. Yeah, if you wanna stop farming, then just jump out of the minecart and turn it off here. Alright, so this was my 200,000 subscriber special. I had a lot of fun designing this farm. I hope you liked it. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.